I'm 17 years old and deeply saddened by the fact that no one has ever come up to me at a dance and gyrated on my ass and or knee. Freak dancing, also known as grinding, is something I'd practiced in my room countless times in preparation for any opportunity to do it with a guy. It's not for lack of putting myself out there. When I'm dancing, I park myself in the center of the room. My moves borrow inspiration from the people that twirl giant arrows on street corners trying to attack the, uh, attract the attention of oncoming traffic and those inflatable figures at car dealerships that dance madly when the wind blows. <laughs> I see grinding as a rhythmic stepping stone to slow dancing, something I've only experienced while swaying in a circle with friends to Casey and JoJo's all my life <laughs> because we had no one else to dance with for once. I'd like to get through a school dance without having to resort to a group sway. <laughs> and the ultimate goal, to end the night with my first kiss. I'd recently purchased the VHS of She's All That, in which a nerdy girl named Lainey Boggs removes her glasses, gets some tweezers, a slight makeover, and ends up dating the most popular guy in school. Because without the hindrance of her physical imperfections, people were able to discover how cool she was on the inside. With glasses and my la hair and rosacea, my makeover would take more work. But these movies gave me hope that if I put enough effort into my appearance, someone would want to get to know me and I would find love. My homecoming dance is in exactly one week. The theme is Wild Wild West, because it's 1999 and Will Smith is all powerful. <laughs> People don't usually bring dates to homecoming and I'm perfectly content with that tradition. No pressure to get a date and a prime opportunity to meet someone. I head to Long's Drug Store and stock my cart with an abundance of cosmetic items that indicate that I'm either a stripper or a pageant mom. When I arrive at Contempo Casuals, I'm in pursuit of a Western-themed dress, a surprisingly daunting task. I'm surrounded by a lot of midriff shirts that tie in the back, pleather and knock-off Adidas warm-ups. If the Spice Girls had a garage sale, it would be the spitting image of this selection. <laughs> a hot pink spandex dress lurks in the corner of my eye, not on theme, but I need this dress. I'll customize it. I used to be embarrassed by the fact that while most people participated in sporting events on the weekends, I had been taking private sewing lessons for years, but it's finally going to pay off. I swing by Yardage Town, pick up some cow print fabric, sew it around the bottom of my dress, and it's perfect. I pose in front of the full-length mirror while blasting Wild Wild West and pantomiming pulling hips from gun, pulse, gun holsters. The next few days are spent freak dancing alone in front of the television, impersonating people on MTV's The Grind. I get low. <laughs> Lower than my body is naturally capable of. Low to the point where I think I may have done permanent damage. I've created this new move where I hold on to the side of my bedpost with one hand for leverage and move my free hand through my hair while envisioning some guy's knee in between my legs. In a matter of days, I won't have to fantasize anymore. My crotch will be swimming in a sea of knees. <laughs> I tried on my dress and studied my silhouette in the mirror again. Oddly enough, I didn't notice before that it clung to my less than ideal stomach. There's a reason why I don't do midriff tops. I can't spend the entire night sucking in if I'm going to be in close contact with guys. There has to be a simple solution. In the lingerie section of JCPenney, my eyes scan the numerous hook and eye closures along a girdle. I hadn't been this intimidated by an undergarment since the G-string became a trendy wedgie. But there's no doubt that this will put a band-aid over my insecurities once it's on. I'd really only ever heard girdles referenced on reruns of Mama's Family, and purchasing it alone is humiliating. But there are embarrassing things that you're okay with sharing with your friends, and there's wearing a girdle at age 17. In front of the mirror at home, I tried the girdle on. It's like when you optimistically try on a dress that's too small for you in a store, 
and then panic when you can't get it back off. <laughs> Except in order for it to serve a purpose, I have to leave it on. My torso is encased in a Chinese finger trap. <laughs> but I won't pass up an hourglass figure. After five days of waiting, the big night has finally arrived. I start getting ready four hours ahead of time. This sort of makeover cannot be rushed. Brunette box dye job, new contacts with a slight tint of light blue to highlight my eyes, fake eyelashes, and pancake foundation to mask my rosacea. I've coated all of my skin in body glitter. Areas that no one can even see and the warning label advises against. <laughs> just for an extra boost of confidence. I smell like I've been marinating in Bath and Body Works body splash, which is accurate. I, I don't buy into just applying it to wrists and behind the ears. I am a fragrant fox. <laughs> Girdle, dress, pigtails, and a cow print bandana. I am the 90s version of Annie Oakley. I am Lanny Boggs. I am all that. The dimly lit gym has bales of hay piled in various areas. There are droopy streamers hanging from the ceiling and large wanted frames with faces cut out for group photos. My friends and I burn through our disposable cameras doing Charlie's Angels back-to-back -back poses. We make our way onto the dance floor. I'm in my element and in pursuit of a provocative dance partner. But sadly, my torso is still painfully aware of the girdle. After several songs, Wild Wild West finally comes on. The dance floor has become electric, and I feel someone behind me. Although this is a school dance, and typically you should know your classmates, my school is massive, therefore making it difficult to know everyone. He's wearing a cowboy hat and a vest with no shirt. He's not ugly, cute even. Not someone I would have noticed at first, but now he's all I want to see. I want to ask him what made him want to dance with me. My scent, my shine, <laughs> my eyes, my hourglass figure. He smiles at me and pulls me closer, bumping his knee in between my legs. <laughs> this, this thing I've been waiting for since the early 90s is finally happening. And it's so much better than getting low with the bedpost in my room. <laughs> this is the most intimate human contact I've ever had. The stabbing pain from the girdle gets overshadowed by butterflies. I want to know him. I want to kiss him. Shit. I want to marry him. <laughs> this can't be a fleeting moment. A relationship only the length of a song. We dance for two more fast songs. Sixpence, none the richers, kiss me, comes on. Is the DJ God? <laughs> we move into proper slow dancing position. His hands are on my hips and I'm gently resting my head on his shoulder, our sweat soaking into each other's clothing. Sometimes gross things don't feel so gross when you want to be close to someone. Could this be my moment? I've completed all the other steps leading up to this. His fingers trace my dress. I look into his eyes and I'm giving him the signal, which is really just a cross between bewilderment and extreme arousal. <laughs> I'd forgotten about the girdle. His fingers cease from tracing, and the horrifying reality sets in. Uh, what is that? Do you have to wear some sort of brace? <laughs> I have no answer to this question that doesn't involve either lying and saying I have scoliosis, or telling the truth and revealing the fact that I'm wearing something you shouldn't have to wear until you're 80. Even the word girdle is ugly. Uh, I have to go to the bathroom, excuse me. I race to the ladies' room faster than the time I got food poisoning from the cafeteria. And honestly, that situation seemed like a diarrhea-infused utopia compared to what's <laughs> happening right now. I lock myself in the stall and begin going over my extremely limited options. Here's the one time I get close to a handsome stranger and I'm stuck in the bathroom, most likely bleeding internally. 
What if I can't find him again? What if he's changed his mind already? The thought of potentially missing out on seeing him again makes the decision obvious. I inch my fingers up my back and gradually unhook the girdle. Red marks are embedded along my stomach like I've been branded and fat shamed simultaneously. Laney Boggs never wore a girdle. My insecurities overflow, filling in the cracks on the tile floors. Girls are waiting in line to use the bathroom, and I can't walk out here carrying this thing. So I shove it as far back as I can behind the toilet seat, pointlessly flush, wash my hands, and casually walk out. I scour the gym, hunting for my dance partner. He's nowhere. I feel heartbroken over someone that made physical contact with me for roughly 15 minutes. The facts absorb some of the heartache. An explanation about what was under my dress would be needed. Maybe some people are better off as strangers. I sat down on a bale of hay, continued to rub my sides, treasuring my stomach's freedom. My contacts are drying out, and these fake eyelashes aren't helping. The sun-ripened raspberry scent is provoking nausea and a headache, and I'm wondering if this body glitter will ever entirely come off. I'm no Laney Boggs, and I'm not all that. And right now, I'm not even all me. I've never valued a shower as much as the one I take when I get home, like a baptiz baptism bringing me back to who I actually am. And for the first time in a long time, I wouldn't change a thing. Holland Kelly, everybody!